Hello and welcome to Counterpoint Conversations. My name is Ritesh and I'm delighted to be joined by Simon Liu who is the Global Imaging Director at OPPO. Hey Simon, welcome to the show. Hello. So we are here in Goa for the OPPO Find X9 series launch and uh, the smartphones uh, typically focus on the imaging capabilities, especially the uh, telephoto zoom. And if we look at our uh, data of counterpoint research where we do consumer studies, uh, a lot of people consider camera as one of the key decision making uh, things when they are looking for a new smartphone. And we are seeing is a new trend where uh, we have a 200 megapixel uh, sensor paired with a telephoto lens. So can you tell us more about uh, what was uh, the thought process behind using a massive sensor for a telephoto lens rather than on the main camera? Okay, um, so for the tele side, uh, basically it means a few things. The main thing would be that you have the capability to provide, uh, to capture some things rather distant to you, right. a longer distance. And usually, you, the farther the distance the object is, it means the smaller it will get. Right? It also means that it's more difficult for you to actually see it, even for your eyes. Right. Right? So given the technology that we have today, uh, we're getting higher and higher pixel counts, right? better resolutions. And um, uh, so it made perfect sense to, to actually apply this and solve this issue. Right? Uh, the nature of magnifying is actually just deciding whether you have four pixels, 40 pixels, or you have 4,000 pixels to show maybe one spot of it. Right. And so putting it on tele basically will make a bi actually a bigger value for it. Because when it's this, this close, the human eye is not going to feel that big of a difference between maybe a 2,000 pixel or, or 4,000 pixel picture because you already see it clear enough right. already there. Right, so this will make uh, the feeling very, very obvious. And it also, we think it squeezes more value out, out of it, actually. So I am a hobbyist photographer and I love to click photos. And uh, I also want to uh, go further and capture those zoom shots, right? But uh, there are a few challenges over here. Uh, because these are handheld devices, we are not using a tripod. And there is a lot that the phone has to compensate for. There is handshake moment and uh, all those other things. And you do have OIS, but it also gets a little bit more tricky when you are shooting in low light. So what have you kind of done to ensure that, you know, users can click blur free photos that are crisp, clear and detailed? Okay. Um, so uh, nowadays, most of the phones have OIS and EIS combined all together. Right. Right, and you may have four to five axes of the stabilization in place. And, um, but at the end of the day, the most critical part is whether the sensors in the phone itself can distinguish, is this an actual intended movement or is it a simply shake that we should try to remove? Right, so this is actually more about the phone understanding the pattern of the human hand. Right, so once the phone learns this pattern, then we know what are the stuff that we actually really need to eliminate and do the correction. Because simply correction, simply correcting is actually the simple part. Choosing what to and what not to is rather uh, the difficult part in terms of shaking and stability. And then, but when, when it comes to low light, um, since we have a rather smaller sensor comparing to the full frame view size, it means that uh, we have only one way to go, which is stacking multiple frames together. And then this goes through actually lots of algorithms. You do alignments, and you do clarity, you do denoise, you do scaling, and you put that all together. And again, <clears throat> this also comes back to whether we understand the pattern of the hand again. Some frames we need to drop, we don't use them. We know this is a frame that was taken that was already shifted away. Right, but still, we understand you're trying to take the picture under this maybe rather dark lighting condition, but at this object. So the phone actually understands that this is the object that you're trying to shoot. And so that we know that we need to focus 
on this target. Right? So this will impact not just the brightness, the color tuning, the tones, and um, pretty much all of the attributes will be tuned based on this, especially when you're enabling special modes like uh, the portrait modes or the bouquet modes that has these uh, background compressing effects and the blurring effects, this will uh, really impact the decision that the phones make. And uh, OPPO has this partnership with Hasselblad. It's been almost three years now. And what started as a camera tuning uh, for software algorithms, has that uh, progressed even more to optical side of things? Well, so uh, Hasselblad is very good in portrait, especially in uh, taking pictures of, of with the skin tones and stuff. So this was the very beginning. And then it started progressing into the portrait mode, like the blurriness that we want to make it look natural and smooth. Right. All right so we are aligning to the uh, Hasselblad actually phone models, uh, sorry, the, the camera models on, on that part. And as for the optics, so obviously they have a very nice <laughs> lens that they can put on the sensor. So we try to mimic uh, the effects of that especially when it comes to the background compressing and, and portrait modes. Right? But as for the lens design itself, then we take their consulting into it during the design phase. Right? So yes, they play a, a very important role. That's a very interesting point that you brought. And uh, I think this is Oppo's first phone where you are getting a teleconverter accessory. right? And it's very interesting because uh, it enhances the optical range from 70 mm to 230 mm. So you can do direct 10x and even more, right? So it's an interesting accessory. I got to try it at the demo zone. Uh, but my question is, uh, who is the target audience that you are looking at with this accessory? Is it something that will uh, be uh, more appealing to wedding photographers or wildlife photographers? Uh, what is it that you are looking for from an audience point of view? You 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 named the two of the most important audiences actually. All right, so uh, so this is able to provide 10x optical and up to 200 digital. All right, so this means uh, you could take it from a very very long distance. Now this is extremely helpful for wildlife because especially those that um, that like to take macro pictures, like when you want to take macro pictures of insects. Traditional way would be close up, right? But in this case, if you get too close, the insect's not going to be there. Right. So the only way is to take the tele approach. You you could be far enough, but still get the macro pictures that you want to get. So right. it's very handy for the uh, all life pictures. And then for the people that are usually used to the big DLSRs with the big cannons, right. and these are a part of the people that would. Ideally, also want to try this because it's a lot lighter, it's a lot smaller, power saving. It's 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 a pocket phone basically you could use and being enhanced with this accessory. All right, so it's not a full DLSR, but it gives you a taste of it, and so it's more like an experimental approach to see if this is something that is um, really valuable uh, to the users, and it's going to help our decision whether. To further explore in this direction for even more accessories. Right. And you can take videos as well uh, at that focal length. Right? Yes, With you can. Great. Uh, so now we've talked about the camera, but uh, software is also equally important. And yes. what you announced with the Find X9 series is the Lumo image engine. So can you tell us more about what it does, especially because both the devices, Find X9 and X9 Pro, are powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 9500 SoC, which has its own ISP and image pipeline. So how do you kind of work closely with uh, MediaTek? And uh, how does the uh, Lumo image engine help in overall photography experience? OK, uh, the Lumo engine is actually composed of multiple uh, components, actually. And we could roughly divide it into three to four parts. Okay. All right. There, there's a part that we mainly enhance the input part. Right? We make we make sure that all the source is good enough as we want. So, so like we announced the true camera sensor, 
in this case. Uh, that's also part of that. And then there comes a second part that actually processes these inputs and makes use of these. And then the third part would be the XDR, end-to-end uh, uh, -end XDR part. And then there's a fourth, which is related to the media tech. So uh, this is actually mainly the parallel computing. Right. It means that uh, we distribute the computing power that is being needed to multiple DSPs that is provided within the chip. Right. Right. So some is on the ISP, some is on the DSP side. There's the, the CPU, also the GPU, um, and all, all combined. Right. So this maintains a better balance. So we are able to do multiple processes on the same frame at the same time. Before it had to be either pipeline or we could only process these on different frames and merge them together. Uh, now we have the capability to do that all on the same frame. And then again, still stack multiple frames like these together to enhance it even further. Great. And that brings me to my last question. Uh, this is the day and age of mobile filmmaking. People are using smartphones to shoot films. They are using them to shoot reels and even something like these interviews and podcasts. So what has OPPO done to kind of, you know, enhance the videography experiences on uh, the Find X9 series. I saw in the slides uh, 4K 120 FPS with Dolby Vision support and all. But can you elaborate more on what exactly a mobile videographer can expect from the Find X9 series? Right. So um, when it comes to video, the main thing different to still pictures is actually because it's something continuous. Right. right? So the tuning will be slightly different. Right. For, for photos, we just need to make sure the color and exposure mostly are stable right there. But video provides this feeling that whether something is consistent or not, you don't want to feel something suddenly. No sudden flash, no sudden color change, no sudden frame movement when it's not intentional. And so uh, we spent lots of time on these territories of different aspects, all different attributes, but trying to make them smooth. Right, so this is basically the most time that we have spent on the uh, video part. And then you already mentioned the resolution part and the FPS part. So this actually gives us more opportunities to enhance the clarity in an even more, more higher way. And so when we put all this together, then and one final thing, which is the skin tone tuning that we massively enhance in this year. So we expect to, we expect to get a better vibe and tone within the videos that we've been capturing with the uh, X9 series comparing to the previous products. Great. I think that was great and insightful discussion. Thank you for taking time out and uh, thanks for joining us on Soundpoint Conversations. Yeah, thank you too. So this was Ritesh and uh, I'll see you in the next one.